Welcome to another episode of Mad Mondays. I am Marilyn Chanel and I am the hostess for Mad Mondays and also the founder of Minorities Who Are Astonishingly Driven Scientists, aka Mad Scientists. And Mad Scientists is a nonprofit organization where we help underrepresented minorities succeed in STEM by providing scholarships, mentorship, research opportunities, and also provide podcasts like this to talk about the struggles of being in STEM and also help them overcome their struggles of being in STEM. And today, One of the things that we want to talk about is overcoming imposter syndrome. Yes, imposter syndrome. It seems like everybody goes through this. And so what is imposter syndrome? So imposter syndrome is a psychological pattern or feeling of being inadequate. It's doubting your abilities It's finding it difficult to accept your accomplishments and feeling like a fraud. Yes, so I know a lot of students can be in class and feel like there's no way I belong here. They can start looking to the left and to the right and looking at their classmates and saying, my classmates have higher grades than I do. How am I still in this class when I failed it two times? Why am I still in this major? Or it can just be comparing yourself to your peers. You may say that my peers are getting more research opportunities than me. Maybe you see your peers are getting more internships than you are. And during the summer when everybody's going out and traveling and doing research and going to this internship, you feel like you're home and you don't have that same opportunity. And imposter syndrome can also happen in the workplace. It could be after you've worked so hard for your degree, you've gotten it, you've studied, you've walked across the stage, and now you are in your field, your career, and you feel as if there's no way I belong here. You see the people who've been working there for years, they have way more experience and you're like, how did I get hired? No, like for real, how did me, how did I get hired? Yes, and so a lot of people tend to deal with imposter syndrome. And one person I wanna talk about is Albert Einstein. One of the greatest people, a theoretical physicist, someone who's groundbreaking in our understanding of space, time. He just revolutionized how we understand space, time, and physics. So he was someone who also dealt with imposter syndrome. And when Albert Einstein was talking to one of his friends, he said, and I quote, The exaggerated esteem in which my life work is held makes me very ill at ease. I feel compelled to think of myself as an involuntary swindler. Yes, so someone is great and someone who had groundbreaking research and someone who revolutionized science, how we see it today and physics, how we see it today. Someone like Albert Einstein felt like he was swindling people, felt like he was an imposter in his own field. Another person I want to bring up is Dr. Yvonne Cagle. And Dr. Yvonne Cagle is someone who worked in the Air Force as a medical liaison. And she was also a NASA astronaut. She used her research to study how the body adapts in space and how it heals in space compared to how it heals down here on earth and uh, she said in a keynote speech at her women in science symposium and talked about how she felt inadequate and so this is what miss e dr yvonne said about dealing with imposter syndrome she said that the way you overcome the imposter syndrome is two words you don't. <laughs> she said, you just don't because it's always there. I still have it. I go to sleep with it every night. I wake up with it every morning to the point where it's companionship. And then I try to marginalize or sideline the imposter because I have bigger things that I'm working on. And I love I love how Miss or Dr. Yvonne Cagle worded this because 
It seems like imposter syndrome may not be something we overcome completely because those thoughts are always going to come up, but it's something that we have to continue to work on daily. And here's just something that I wanted to tell you guys about my own personal story of dealing with imposter syndrome. Um, As you guys know, I am currently a student at Winthrop University pursuing a career or pursuing a Bachelor of Science in Chemistry with a concentration in biochemistry. And so I want to become a cosmetic chemist. And one thing I can say is that I recently failed a class. Can you guess which one? Were you able to guess? No, it wasn't organic chemistry. (laughs) It was physical chemistry. Yes, I failed PCHEM. It was my first year as well my first semester as a senior which was actually last semester it was during COVID where I was kind of getting used to having classes online and having a hard class like PCHEM can you imagine how mixing those together and I ended up not doing so well and I ended up failing the class and so I ended up having a short, short, short notice of imposter syndrome because I kind of doubted myself for a little moment. How can I continue to go on after failing this? There's no way people are going to listen to me. And after having something like this, being the hostess of this podcast, how can I continue to tell people about my story instead when I'm struggling myself? But honestly, that's what makes me qualified because there are going to be people who come after me people that I encounter who have had struggles or who are going through the exact same thing that I went through and they're going to want to hear from me. And so I just want to let you know that I've fallen. Yes, I have, but I've gotten back up and I'm continuing to go. And just like Albert Einstein and Dr. Yvonne Cagle, and just like Dr. Yvonne Cagle was saying is that she continued to keep going even when she still had the voices in her head of you're an imposter you're an imposter you're an imposter and so one thing about overcoming imposter syndrome is you got to shift your mindset sweetie honey you got to shift your mindset is that I want you to know that well first make sure that you are in this position for the right reason Make sure you're here because you know that this is what God has called you to do. Like, this is your God-given calling. I have to be someone who graces the STEM field. I I just have to. Make sure that this isn't something that you've chosen because you think, oh my gosh, this is some place that I know I'm going to make money. I am only here because my parents pushed me to be here. They want me to be a doctor. They want me to be an engineer. They want me to be this big-time person in STEM No, because that's kind of going to heighten your feeling of imposter syndrome because one, you know you don't want to be there because you've been pushed to be there. And that's why I say make sure you choose it for the right reason. But when you know that you're in the right seat or you kind of have a guess that this is where I'm supposed to be, this is my calling to being here, then you got to shift your mindset. And that's where it comes of knowing that you've chosen this path because it's something that you're passionate about and you feel like you can make a difference. And I want to let you know that we need people exactly like you. We need your flaws. We need your brain. We need your authenticity. We need your story. We need the bad neighborhoods you came from. We need the small town you came from. We need the people who came from great neighborhoods, great parents. We need the people who came from broken neighborhoods, from broken relationships, broken marriages we need exactly people like you because you're going to be able to reach those in your field that other people can't reach and that's exactly why we need you you have i'm telling you you have been placed in here for a reason you've been placed on this earth exactly for such a time as this and there are things that will not be released until you hit the scene And imposter syndrome, I'm telling you today, is not going to be one of the things that we allow to hinder us after today, okay? We need you to know that you belong here. You're the game changer. 
You're the one who will create whatever it is that needs to be created. For the people who are in science, they're groundbreaking findings that only you can find. Groundbreaking cancer treatments, groundbreaking research that we only need you, that can only be found through you. There are people in technology. Only you can crack the code. Only you can create the next big hit thing of technology tomorrow. Only you can be able to create that. People who are in engineering, only you can create that great plan, that great blueprint. Only you can build that that the next big thing. People in math, you can create the, the greatest statistics of tomorrow. You can create or solve those difficult equations. We need people exactly like you and the game won't shift until you walk in it until you walk in it and we can't continue to allow imposter syndrome to be that thing that holds us back and so that's exactly why I wanted to talk about this today because we kind of we kind of have these conversations in our head all the time and that's why I wanted to tell you guys to shift your mindset shift your focus and for a lot of us we're too afraid to step up to the plate because we don't feel like we can hit a home run we don't feel like we can do it and it's always those voices in our head that says there's no way you can do it oh my gosh you're not that good you're a fraud and today and today I want to tell you to start speaking life into yourself Life and death lies in the power of your tongue. It lies in the power of your tongue. And so I want to challenge you guys two things this week, two things this week. First, I want you to research someone who has accomplished a lot in the field that you plan to go into. Me, I plan to go into this, the, the field of science. And so that's kind of why I researched Albert Einstein and I found Dr. Yvonne Cagle today and I researched them and there are two people that I found that dealt with imposter syndrome and they both continue to go even after all of the groundbreaking things that they've accomplished they still dealt with imposter syndrome and they continue to go on I challenge you to research that but number two I challenge you, and this may be the hardest one. Number two is I challenge you to start speaking to every negative thought and combating that with something positive. So if you ever feel like there's no way I belong here, no, 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 no. You need to start speaking to it and say, no, 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 no. I belong here because there are people who are going to need me in this field. I am studying to be that great doctor because there are going to be patients that need me. I'm studying to be that great mathematician because there are going to be numbers or codes that I have to crack that nobody will, uh, nobody else will be able to do. I'm here for that. And so that's exactly what I challenge you guys to do today is start speaking to those negative thoughts. Start speaking to those negative thoughts because if you, we are what we continue to think. And if you constantly think that you are an imposter, you're going to show up in class, you're going to show up at your job, you're going to show up at your career, your business, and you are going to act like an imposter. If you continue to think there's no way I belong here, oh my gosh, I'm such a fraud, I'm, 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 I'm just a failure at everything I do, you are subconsciously, you're putting that into your brain and you're going to continue to walk that out and you're going to continue to act that out and you're going to continue to act like an imposter. You're going to continue to give subpar work. You're going to continue to perform like somebody who does poor work. You're going to perform like someone who isn't the best. You're going to act like someone who isn't the best. When you have meetings, when you have tests, when you have whatever it is, proposals or whatever it is in your career or in your field, you're going to walk into the room as if you don't belong there. And that's exactly what we do not need. And so we need to silence those voices of the imposters and we need to speak back to them. And say, no, 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 I belong here. I was needed. I was created for a time such as this. I'm someone who needs to be in this field. Who needs to be in this field. To meet those people. To impact those people. To change the game. And that's exactly why 
we continue to reiterate on every episode and I'm going to continue to reiterate on every episode of Mad Mondays and it is the slogan for minorities who are astonishingly driven scientists and that is we are graced to dominate STEM. This is something that you are graced to do. This is something that you are are able to do. And we want you to know that. And so this has been another episode of Mad Mondays. And so I challenge you today, one, research the people who have been doing great things in the field that you are in. And see whether they have dealt with imposter syndrome and how they have dealt with it. And two, and the thing that I need you to continue to do, not this week, but just continue to do throughout your career, throughout your life. And that's start speaking life over yourself. Remember that life and death lies in the power of your tongue. So you need to start speaking over yourself. Speak to that little imposter in you and say, no, 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 I belong here. So this has been Marilyn Chanel with another episode of Mad Mondays. And remember, we are graced to dominate STEM.